Hello and welcome to this lesson video where we will go over a quick overview of uh, heavy construction industry and projects. We will cover the shown learning objectives um, on heavy construction projects, the need for construction equipment, the estimate typical estimating process estimating process and math uh, earthwork operations the construction industry can be divided into two main uh, sectors heavy construction and building construction uh, heavy construction is also known as horizontal construction while building construction is mostly uh, vertical there are multiple differences between these two main uh, industry sectors. First, uh, the owners uh, of heavy construction uh, projects are usually public entities, like uh, uh, the federal, state, or local government. This is because uh, heavy contractors usually build large uh, infrastructure projects and facilities, like dams, roads, and bridges. Such infrastructure is the responsibility of the government agencies to fund, develop, and maintain. On the other hand, uh, building projects can be owned by either public government agencies or private entities uh, such as uh, high-tech companies, hospitals, and uh, hotels, and others. Second, uh, heavy and building uh, contractors deal with different owners. Uh, this is why they are awarded the projects using different project delivery systems. Heavy contractors and public projects need to submit uh, formal bids and go through an open bidding process with the hope to be uh, the lowest bidder and win the project. On the other hand, the private owners of the uh, building projects are not tied with public laws and regulations. So, commercial contractors and building owners negotiate their way to build the project. Third, you can see from uh, the photos, uh, the heavy uh, projects have less number of trades and specialty work packages compared to uh, building projects. Just look at the uh, top right uh, photo of the interior uh, building during construction. You can see uh, electrical system, plumbing system, mechanical system, fire sprinkler, concrete, drywall studs, and other systems. On the other hand, heavy construction projects have a lot of dirt and soil to move, and large uh, structures uh, made of steel, concrete, uh, there are few uh, cases of heavy projects where uh, it will, they will include uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, such as uh, water uh, and energy plants. The last difference you can see here is the use of the heavy equipment. From its name, heavy construction uh, will be very dependent on large equipment and machines to accomplish its job as you can see here. So why why heavy equipment uh, is used in construction? What are the specific reasons for using heavy construction equipment? You can see in the left picture there are two scrapers here uh, and a dozer working and a mass excavation work. In the middle picture you can see multiple tower cranes while in the right picture uh, you can see a couple of excavators working in a basement uh, uh, dig hole. The first reason for using construction equipment is improving the safety of the workforce. For example, a tunnel boring machine, as shown in the top uh, this photo here, minimizes the risk of tunnel collapse uh, accidents and the loss of human life. The second reason is to compensate for our limited uh, human physical capacities. 
uh, of lifting heavy loads or reaching with these loads to extreme heights and spans. Uh, the two uh, gentlemen in the photo here uh, 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 are not carrying this generator. The just directing the crane that is uh, carry that's actually the one carrying the generator to put it in the right spot. The third reason for using machines is their high production rates. Machines don't get uh, don't experience fatigue like human, and they produce much more work in an hour compared to a completely uh, human uh, crew. For example, the bucket uh, of the shown drag line can carry up to seven or eight cubic yards in just one load, which translate into incredible hourly production rates and low unit cost. Heavy construction is equipment is used in typical operations that will cover that will cover in this course, uh, like earth moving, compaction. Uh, paving, lifting, piling, and many more. Um, this figure here shows some examples of heavy equipment that are mostly relevant to earth work and uh, earth moving, like trucks, loaders, uh, compactors, graders, and uh, excavators and dozers. We mentioned before that heavy construction projects usually follow a hard hard uh, bidding process where the lowest bidder is awarded the project. The contractors need to have a systematic estimating process to develop complete and competitive bids to win uh, the project while not being too far from the close, uh, closest bidder. Being too much lower than the next bidder uh, can be very scary as it can mean that the winning contractor may miss part of the scope or used un unrealistic assumptions in the estimate. Here you can see seven steps for uh, the uh, estimating process usually uh, done in the industry. The first step, decide first if you will bid uh, this project or not. You need to make uh, sure that you have the right experience for the project. The project is not too far from your company's base location and the project is the right size for your company, not too small or too large. Second, obtain and understand uh, the plans and specifications of the project, which are parts of your bid documents, uh, uh, documents and package. Third, visit the site and make sure that all site conditions are reflected in the plans. Fourth, Identify the scope of the work, which is done by breaking down the project into its main packages and activities. Fifth, calculate the quantities of the work packages and activities you identified. Quantity takeoff requires some knowledge of the available construction techniques. You perform the quantity takeoff following the same way the structure is built. Six, price each bid item by estimating its unit cost and price. This requires detailed analysis of the operations in each bed item in terms of the resources needed and the sequence of these operations. The pricing step is very critical, so we'll cover next what items need to be covered when pricing a bed and its work items. You need the structure of the bed estimate and two main uh, components, cost, and market. There is a big difference between cost and price as we'll see next. Cost refers to the actual expense that the contractor pays to finish the work. As you can see, the cost includes direct and indirect cost. The direct cost is any expense that you can directly associate to a single activity or work package. The direct cost includes material, labor, equipment, on, and subcontractors. For example, the material cost of a structure of concrete can be ready mixed concrete that you uh, pour. Its labor cost 
uh, includes the crew that plays, uh, places the concrete. Its equipment cost includes the concrete pump. And the subcontractor cost can include the cost of the rebar and formwork that is done by a specialty uh, contractor. The indirect cost is any cost that you cannot directly associate to a work package in your project. The indirect cost includes site and overhead uh, items. The site overhead includes general site conditions and supervision, like project managers, project engineers, and superintendents, and also temporary facilities, like office trailers, dumpsters, and mobile toilets. The office overhead includes all the staff and facility costs of the main office, where multiple functions are performed to support the different projects of the company. These office functions include business leadership, administration, system meeting, human resource management, and marketing. The markup is not only limited uh, to the profit, uh, but it also includes some contingency fund to account for, for unforeseen risky events that can occur during the project. A higher contingency uh, fund is allocated in risky projects with missing information or non typical work conditions. Now we'll focus on mass earthwork operations as a major part of typical uh, 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 heavy construction project and learn about earthwork equipment and cost estimation. Earthwork mainly includes moving large amounts of soil uh, w within the construction site or to the construction site or off the construction site. Earthwork is almost in all types of con heavy construction projects such as highways and dams. Other bid uh, packages will cover uh, that will cover in this course include uh, concrete uh, structures, crane operations and rigging, asphalt, piling, and excavation support systems. Earthwork involves the typical operations of excavating the soil holding the soil from one location to another, placing the soil and grading it to a specific grade, and compacting it to a specific density. Over the lessons of this course, we'll learn about the production aspects of common machines and equipment used in these operations, such as uh, trucks, dozers, scrapers, and compactors. This is the end of this video where you learn about heavy construction, heavy equipped machinery, and typical estimating uh, estimation process. You learn about the major mass uh, earthwork uh, operations, which we will study uh, each one of them in more details in the following videos. But first, we need to cover in the coming video the main geotechnical materials used in mass earthwork, earthwork which are soil and rock. Thanks for watching. And have a good day.